the Kansas City Chiefs, the Los Angeles Chargers, Houston Texans, Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, the Buffalo Bills, Raiders, Broncos, Commanders, Eagles, Steelers twice, Browns twice, Bengals twice. If you didn't catch on by now, which I know y'all already did, those are the Baltimore Ravens 2024 opponents. And that was already finalized months ago, but next week, well, actually this week, we're going to be seeing the schedule. And people have been like, man, the Baltimore Ravens, their schedule is so tough this year. They play so many teams that made the playoffs last year, 10 playoff team from last year to be exact and it's got a lot of people frightened it's got a lot of people scared it's got a lot of people concerned that oh my goodness how did baltimore ravens get this schedule and what are they gonna do with it now me me um recency bias plays a factor uh but certainly recency bias plays a big factor in this one and it is the ultimate fact and we're gonna go over that in just a bit team keep it clean i hope y'all are doing really really good i love y'all so much and i appreciate everything that y'all are doing make sure you subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video and let's get into this schedule and if ravens fans should be scared should be worried should be concerned about the schedule coming up now we touched on this briefly a couple of videos ago but we decided to take an in-depth look at the baltimore ravens schedule this year but in order to really get an in-depth look at this year's schedule, let's look at how they did last season. So now, um, last season, of course, the Baltimore Ravens, they played a lot of playoff teams last year. And I remember going into some of these games like worry, like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think the Baltimore Ravens can still win, but ooh, it's going to be tough. And what did the Baltimore Ravens do just about each and every time, especially against them playoff teams? They shut me up and made me look stupid. Made me look like a fool. And let's just take a quick review. Uh, the, week one, obviously, then you don't know if Houston, Texas are going to be a playoff team or not. It's so early in the season. C.J. Stroud was a rookie, but they beat them 25-9. to nine. But that was week one. And it's like, uh, okay, cool, whatever. But uh, against the, the Cleveland Browns, now they had uh, DTR starting because Deshaun Watson, he was hurt. And then another one of their backups, he ended up being hurt. So DTR, they, they beat them 28-3. But there's a little asterisk on that because, again, they didn't have Deshaun Watson. And, again, when they played Deshaun Watson later that year, we remember that game. Um, but playoff team versus Detroit. Remember going into that game, Detroit, they were coming in hot. And I was thinking, like, ooh. This is the Detroit Lions. We knew Lamar Jackson's record versus the NFC. He only lost one game against the NFC. It was against the Giants a couple years ago. And that game, the Baltimore Ravens had it won. But they were just like, you know what? Giants here. You take it. But anyway, against the Detroit Lions, the Baltimore Ravens beat them 38-6. to This is the, the team that was in the NFC Championship this year against the San Francisco 49ers when a lot of us were hoping for a Baltimore-Detroit Super Bowl. So, oh, oh we knew we weren't going to get it, though. We knew that well, that wasn't going to go down. I would have loved it. We all would have loved it, but it is what it is. But they beat them down bad, bad, 38-6. to six. Then a couple weeks later, uh, they played the Seattle Seahawks, another team that was hot. They were hot. They were riding the wave. They were doing that thing. Seattle Seahawks were coming in. And you know what? Seattle Seahawks, they weren't coming in to Baltimore that game to try to beat the Ravens. No, no, no. They were trying to examine Mike McDonald. Because they were like, hey, we know Pete Carroll about to be out of here. He about to be going. Let's take a closer look at this Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator. But anyway, the Seattle Seahawks, the Ravens beat them 37 to 3. <laughs> 37 to 3. They dog walked them from start to finish. The only reason they even got three points is because DK Metcalf, who I would love to be a Baltimore Raven. But anyway, DK Metcalf, he broke a long, like 58 some 50 something yard catch and run. But they tackled him before he got to the end zone, obviously, because they only scored three points. That entire, entire game, they only got three points. And that's where Odell Beckham Jr. got his first touchdown, too, of the season. Uh, then versus the Rams, the L.A. Rams, who also a playoff team. That game, that was the game where it was close. That was the game against a playoff team where it was very, very close. And that was um, probably my favorite game from last year, the most memorable game from last year. And the game where that was the game where I was for sure, oh, yeah, Ravens all the way this year. Moments like this, you, you cannot waste a moment like this. You cannot waste a game like this. This is so special. This shows how special this team is. But we know the end result. But anyway, they beat the Rams 37 to 31 in overtime. Uh, then Jacksonville Jaguars, were they a playoff team last year? Nah, I don't think so. They beat them down. But the San Francisco 49ers, 
who were in the Super Bowl last year. So they were obviously a playoff team. They were much more than a playoff team. They were a playoff winning team. They won all their games and made it all the way to the Super Bowl yet again. It's like 49ers. They just keep getting back to the Super Bowl over and over. They keep getting to the NFC Championship, Super Bowl, NFC Championship, Super Bowl, but they just can't seem to finish the job. But the Baltimore Ravens certainly finished the job against them in the regular season this past year, and they beat them 33-19. to Number one seed, San Francisco 49ers in the NFC. 33 to 19. They beat them down. And then the world was watching too. All the lights were on and they were their brightest. And the Ravens, the Ravens started off a bit slow. They started off a, t- a tiny bit slow. You know what? That might have been actually another one of my favorite games from last year. I'm somebody who used to, long time ago, I used to, every Ravens season, I used to watch a bunch of highlights from all the games after the game. I used to, whether the Ravens win or lose, I watch the highlights from the game. I don't do that anymore. I don't know why. But I, I just, I don't do it anymore. But for this game, it's funny, like two days ago, I was just watching highlights from that game. Because somebody brought it up on Twitter how Kyle Hamilton, he was down on the ground, then he got up and got the pick. And then I was just thinking about how Kyle Hamilton, he was playing drop back safety that game. He was in the slot doing all this, playing everywhere like he normally does. But that was a statement game for him, for sure. I mean, this was a statement season from him, for sure. He was amazing. But I just wanted to see that once again. I wanted to relive that game once again because it was so special in the Baltimore Ravens season this year. So then following that, the very, the very next game, six days later, they played the Miami Dolphins, who were also a playoff team. What did they do to the Miami Dolphins, who were a playoff team? And I believe they had the number one offense in the league last year. They were a little bit of actress on it, but hey, numbers, not that they don't lie, but they don't tell the whole story. But the Miami Dolphins, they beat them 56 to 19. Had Dolphins beat writers calling the Ravens classless. For running up the score. These same beat writers who cover these same Miami Dolphins who scored 70 points on the Broncos early the season said the Baltimore Ravens were classless for, <laughs> for running up the score. Now, me, I ain't had no problem when Dolphins did it to the Broncos. I obviously ain't had no problem with the Ravens did it to the Dolphins. I don't have no problem with nobody running up the score because that's your job. Score as many points as you possibly can because you don't want the team to come back. You don't want to give them no chance of coming back at all. Remember them, that, that Ravens-Cardinals uh, game from last year? Ravens were up. Then the Cardinals started creeping, creeping, creeping. So, yeah, you don't want that to happen. So run the score up. But anyway, I say all that to say this, that the Baltimore Ravens against the playoff teams, so the best of the best, the guys that made it in the dance, Ravens did their thing, and they did it well. Overall, the only playoff team that they lost to was the Cleveland Browns, and they lost 33-31, last second field goal. But whether they got blown out or whether it was a close loss, it's still a loss. But nine times out of ten, the Baltimore Ravens against the playoff teams, they did what they had to do, and they did it in a big way. So when you look at their schedule, yes, their schedule is going to be tough. Yes, their schedule is going to present different challenges. Yeah, it's a com- completely different teams, too. Completely different teams from last year. But I don't think... Well, you should be concerned, but at the same time, Ravens have shown you like, hey, they know how to take care of business against the best of the best. Now, <laughs> if you're asking about the playoffs, then okay, that's a whole different conversation right there, buddy, because that is still every single Baltimore Ravens fan biggest concern. Ravens fans don't care about regular season. Not that we don't care about regular season, but you get what I mean. We cool regular season. We, we expect ex- our ex- expectations for regular season to continue. We expect them to do well in the regular season, but playoffs is our biggest concern. But hopefully, the fix to our playoff issues, the answer to our playoff questions, will be Derrick Henry. <laughs>